Today, we're going to talk about lot traceability in NetSuite. Um, currently have a, a item master pulled up for um, a finished good assembly item that we're selling, a, a case of soap. Um, this assembly item is lock controlled. So if I go into our inventory detail, we're going to be able to see not just our inventory numbers and our and you know bins, but also uh, those lot numbers here. We can see you know all our different lot numbers. We can see the location and the on hand and available quantities of those lots that we have. Um, and then we're going to be able to do the same for our components. So because this is an assembly item. We have a bill of material with associated components. I'm just going to open up a quick bill of materials inquiry here so we can talk about that. Uh, this report, if you're not familiar with it in NetSuite, shows for that assembly item that we're selling an exploded out bill of material with all those components and those different levels within the assembly. So I have for our um, carton of soap. You know, we have a couple levels to the assembly. So this would be like a sub assembly with its own list of components. Now, this is important because within that sub assembly, we have another lock controlled item. This is going to be um, an aloe ingredient that's going to go into that sub assembly. And we can see again, this is also going to be lock controlled inventory item. Um, and so it becomes really critical when we have recalls, when we need to run forward and backward trace that we can do this through a multiple level bill of material. If we have a purchase order um, that we receive in with a lot of aloe that we need to run forward trace to see what finished good it went into for whatever reason, we can do that. And we can run backward trace. If we need, if we have a bad batch and we want to run backward trace to see what ingredients, what lots were going into our finished good, then we could run that backward from the top level as well. Uh, really flexible there. So let me go ahead and open up our lot traceability app. And I have the shortcut here. Um, t -t 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 -t. I thought I had it shortcut. Right, we'll just go through our through our drop down menu there. So here's our lot trace app. This is um, where we're going to you know input our our trace type forward or backward. We can uh, narrow it down by subsidiary or location, and then the type of transactions we want to consider for that traceability. And then we input our uh, item characters and then the lot. We'll go, we'll go ahead and do a backward trace first. Um, and so we'd be doing a backward trace for our top level assembly item. Uh, and then we can bracket that in by dates if we need to and put that lot number. When we run that trace, it's going to return our results. So here's our lot traceability for that assembly item, uh, top level assembly, that lot number that we would want to run our backward trace on. And we can see now the total quantity that we have on hand of that lot code for that assembly item. And then on our inbound, we can see that top level assembly, the sub assembly, and then the actual allo itself that went into that subassembly and the lot number of the aloe that went into that subassembly, which then went into our finished good. Um, and then the purchase order, the, the vendor that we procured it from, I can even open up that item receipt transaction that we received that aloe in on. I see we've got our item receipt you know, from, from Pixambi. We can see the items we received in. There's our aloe. I open up our inventory detail, we can see this is where we assign lock codes on, on material and ingredients as we receive in. So I was able to run that um, backward trace at the top level all the way down to the, um, to the component lot number and see where we received it in from as well. Can also see builds. So we can actually see the work order transactions where we consumed that uh, allo into our subassembly, and then the lot code for that subassembly. We may want to run trace on that as well um, if we needed to. Although it's going to, you know, automatically be incorporated into the top level uh, since that allo went into it. Um, and then outbound, we can see sales orders that may have been fulfilled that included that um, lot number that top level. So we can see those two fulfillment transactions. We can see the delivery address, the customers, um, and we can drill into those transactions if we need to as well.
Now, if we were going to run a forward trace uh, on the aloe, save this forward trace. So now if we want to look at, okay, how about for our ingredient or our component for a particular lot number where we just had a recall from our supplier, we now need to run forward trace to see what um, finished goods could have been impacted. And so we run that forward trace for the lot. We can see our total on hand quantities of that lot uh, of aloe. We can see the inbound purchase order where we received in that lot code, um, that quantity of aloe. If I open up my build transaction, we can see all the different assembly build or all the different assemblies that went into, not just our, um, not just our, our soap that we were looking at earlier, although we can see that here. Uh, that it went into that soap in a quantity of 20. And then on the outbound side, this is what's really important. We can see from that component lock code in a multi-level assembly item, we can actually get to the sales orders that contained um, that lot ingredient, even though it was separated by layers within our bill of material. So really important um, and those lot codes and, and this, it works the same with serial numbers. Those are all being captured on our receiving transactions, our manufacturing transactions where we're consuming ingredients or we're building assemblies. Uh, and then on the outbound side, when we're fulfilling sales orders and, and everything gets tied together nicely, even like bin transfer transactions. If I'm transferring this lot between bins, I could see those as well here and being able to drill down into all the un underlying transactions. And then also if I needed to, if I had a lot, lot of data here, I could also export this um, for manipulation outside the system.